Howdy folks, my name is Timmy and I am a third year engineering student at the University of Washington, uh, majoring in bioengineering with a minor in international studies. Um, recently I had to do a class reflection on how my study habits have changed over time and long story short, there would be a lot of things that I would have changed going into my first year, knowing that all of the stuff that I had to know was gonna be used later on in my third year and my fourth year. Um, so I just wanted to provide some tips for first year engineering students, if that's helpful at all. And don't worry, I won't waste your time. Here are some timestamps for some of the tips that I'm gonna be going over. If any of them catch your eye, you can go ahead and fast forward to that. Okay, let's get right into it. My first tip is digitalization. Now it's commonly stated in academia that students that take notes by hand as opposed to taking notes by laptop have better retention, better processing of new information, and they just generally learn better. Digitalization is a process where you might scan your notes, for example, into a PDF, or you might put them into a browser such as Notion, which is a note organizing application. Um, and this will really allow you to look at your notes later on as reference. This is the most important thing you can do in your first year as an engineering student because a lot of the introductory courses like physics, chemistry, um, biology, those courses are actually built upon later in your upper division classes. And if you don't have those notes to fall back on, you can really get into sort of a, sort of a tough situation where you have to relearn everything from the internet and online tools. Whereas if you look back at your notes that are digitalized, then you know how you learned it the first time, which makes learning it the second time easier. Um, to demonstrate, I'll just show you a little bit of, uh, I guess, what I have going on in terms of my notes, which I have not digitalized yet, um, unfortunately. This is something that I would change. Um, let me go get it. Here are some of my notes from matrix algebra, linear algebra, physics, all of that good stuff. The problem with these notes is that they are virtually useless right now. Like I literally have no ability to control F or if I need to review a certain topic, I have no idea where it is. And so I have not touched these things ever since I took the notes. And that's the biggest problem is if you don't categorize and scan your notes, then you just won't be able to access them later on when it's really important to do so. So en enough with these. And if you're coming straight out of high school, you might be thinking, okay, but am I actually gonna look back at these notes? Because in high school, there's sort of this running complaint that um, you really never look or look forward to some of the things that you've learned. Like you don't see yourself applying them later on in the future. Like for example, why would you need to know how Vikings got to Russia? Things like that you wouldn't need to know, but it's the opposite in college. In fact, in college, everything is mostly in sequence as part of your curriculum. Uh, and a lot of colleges, unless you go to like Brown University, the, the curriculum is very sequenced and in order. So you take a certain class, then you take the second quarter of that class, and eventually you'll take an upper division class, which has prerequisites from those intro classes. Um, and so having those notes on hand will really help you in the future. Um, and if not, they're just a great study resource and a study tool for your friends in the future who are also taking those courses. So that's just a pro tip is being able to really quickly access your notes from the past. All right, my second tip is to diversify. Now, I think the most underrated part of the engineering curriculum is actually not any of the STEM stuff. It's really the humanities courses that you take. And you might notice that a lot of your engineering curriculums will have accompanying or complementary humanities courses. Um, and those are really the courses where you learn what it means to be an engineer. It's not specifically when you learn about fluid statics or um, gel mechanics or things like that. You learn what it means to be an engineer in terms of your role in society from these other courses in the humanities. Um, I'm a little bit biased because I'm a minor in international studies and I plan on applying for law school in the future, uh, but I really do believe that an interdisciplinary education is the best education. and the only real way to learn why you're solving engineering problems in the first place is to learn why the problems exist in the first place. And a lot of that has to do with societal structure, a lot of that has to do with history, and a lot of that has to do with how the world interacts as it progresses. Uh, in effect, really, you need to understand the context for why you're engineering solutions. Um, for example, right now I'm taking a class in disability studies as part of my minor, and that has really reshaped the way I think about how engineers approach disability. Um, oftentimes there's this biomedicine approach where engineers think that we need to solve everything, for example, with prosthesis or um, with learning aids, um, when really 
we need to primarily take a step back and recognize, okay, what are we defining as disability in the first place? And how can we actually solve this in a different way by making society accessible for everyone? Or this concept known as universal design. My third tip is to read, read, and read some more. And I know this one is something that not a lot of engineering students like to do. Um, we see the syllabus and we see all of the textbook chapters and all of the assigned pages. And we, as in me and some others, don't necessarily want to look through all of that and, and we might just ignore it, but that's where trouble can really begin. Uh, and I think the way that I started thinking about textbooks that let me read and skim textbooks a lot better and a lot more efficiently is recognizing that textbook is not going to be exam material. Most of the time it's not. Textbook is going to be material that provides context for things that might be on the exam. So what I mean by that is your exam question might have things related to the textbook, but it's never gonna be like define this word or define that concept. It's gonna be this concept means this, this, this. But if you have read the textbook, you might already be familiar with that concept. And so then you can solve whatever math problem or physics problem or whatever it is um, more effectively because you don't have to figure out, okay, this is some foreign situation. Here's how I approach long textbook chapters. The most effective way for me has been not looking at the beginning, not looking in the middle, or looking at the back of the book or any summaries that you find online. Really, it's going to the end of the chapter and looking at the last few three or four concluding paragraphs. This is where the core of what you're learning in that chapter is anyways, and this is gonna have all of the information that you need in terms of takeaways. And your textbook really provides context. It, it builds up the situation so that when you go into lecture, you can tackle problems at a more um, specific or low level. And so when you look at textbook chapters, look at the end first, read all the conclusions, and then if you have time, I would go back and what I do is I start at the beginning and I just skim first, last line of every paragraph, um, just read generally the flow towards the argument at the end or the final conclusion. And in this way, you really build the story for why um, the research is being done, why the chapter is focusing on that specific topic, and then you can begin um, to see how different concepts connect. Moreover, just read in general. I really like reading for fun. Um, when I do have the time, I know it's a little bit harder to find the time, especially in your first year when you have to do a lot of introductory classes. But if you can find the time reading fiction, reading self-help books that make you roll your eyes, or reading just any general book about emotion or the human experience, I think really brings light to the engineering curriculum. And that's something that I looked forward to, um, just being able to rest on a Saturday and just read a little bit, maybe an hour. Um, so if you have the time, I would highly recommend reading. My fourth and second to last tip is thinking about things in terms of projects and sort of the end goal. Um, and the reason why I'm trying to avoid the word end goal is because you want to think of a project as a cumulative experience. It's not just what happens at the end, it's the entire journey. Make it a habit of asking yourself periodically and often why you're doing what you're doing. Um, why you're in electrical engineering, why you're in mechanical engineering, why you're even in college in the first place. Uh, it's important to ground yourself in, in the understanding of why you want to do that so that when you get a bad exam score or you get poor homework results, you know that this isn't the end of the world and there's going to be something at the, the end of the road and, uh, and something that you're working toward that is bigger than you. So just grounding yourself in your end goal is really important as you move forward in your college career and just generally it helps me every time I have a struggle in class, I just remember my end goal of wanting to go to law school and how I want to help in the biomedical sphere. All right, my fifth and final tip is talking about tempo. And of course, everyone else will say this, but I really wanna hone in on the fact that you need to take your time in your first year. Your first year is one of the best years and you're gonna look back later on and think, oh, if I had just taken a little bit slower and done more things that I wanted to do outside of my academics, then I would have had a lot more fun. And it's a regret that you might have, um, but it isn't the end of the world if you're watching this after your first year. You can always do that later in um, other years. Uh, I think the most important thing for college is going into different student organizations, reaching out into your communities and seeing what is there available for you to help on. What projects can you take in, in, um, in your free time? and just generally, how can you find your group of people? And the, the biggest thing that you can do is find an engineering group of students who are taking similar classes to you, uh, 
that have shared common interests. So they double as your study group, but also as your friends. And that's really a lot easier than it might seem. I know it's a little bit intimidating going to college when you might not know a lot of people. Uh, me personally, I came from a smaller town and then I went to UW which has a population of, a student population of like 35,000 students. And I didn't know any other engineering students, but that quickly changed through um, school programs, as well as just finding people that were in the same classes as me, like I said before. So reach out to those people. You never know, they're gonna become some of your best supports and some of the best friends you'll make. Well, that's all for me. Thank you for watching. If you have watched up to this point, um, it means a lot. Um, I've just been making YouTube videos for fun, I guess. Uh, so if you'd like to, you can go ahead and leave a like and or subscribe uh, for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.